Dude, I love these wheels. Look at that Canadian flag right there. <laughs> <laughs> this is so cool. Woo, look at that. It's a wooden bridge over the Truckee River. Ah, this is so beautiful. Ah, look at this, right along the river. Bridge. What's up guys welcome back to the channel i got another e-bike review coming to you but this time it's on a type of e-bike i've never reviewed before this thing is pretty nuts it's the most expensive e-bike i've reviewed it's the most powerful e-bike i've reviewed and it's the uh, most high-end e-bike i've ever reviewed i've had it for about 30 days now i've had it for a full month and uh, i've taking it all over the place uh, BLM land open fields hills the desert up in the Sierra Tahoe uh, mountain range across the river and through the woods I've taken it all over the place and uh, I am impressed with this thing uh, mid-drive uh, e-bikes are a whole nother beast I've been doing a lot of hub drives but this is a mid-drive this one's called the bike tricks juggernaut ultra FS Pro it's a top tier, high end, high performance mid drive e bike, and I think you're gonna like this one. This is pretty amazing. Let's take a closer look. <laughs> Across this little bridge. <laughs> now we're on a single track. There we go, single track. <laughs> yeah. Coming through. You got to be careful. Uh, there might be bikers coming through. Check it out. This is an absolute beast of a mountain bike. So this is by a company called Bike Tricks. They're out of uh, Saskatoon, Canada. And uh, they make some pretty cool bikes. You've probably seen some of their bikes before because they, they do make other bikes. This is their, their flagship, their top of the line, the best that they make. Uh, they do make some uh, cruiser bikes and some commuter bikes and uh, some step throughs and things like that. But this one is the monster. <laughs> um, I'll just get this right out. This thing is expensive. It's $4,399. The last time I checked the website, it may be more, it may be less. I don't know, depending on how the world is with shipping and all this other stuff that's going on and demand. But as it stands right now, as I'm filming this, I checked the website and it's $4,399. There might be some discounts available though. 
But uh, yeah, this thing is, is pretty nuts. It's a full-size mountain bike. It comes in two different frame sizes, I believe. Um, this one is the, uh, the bigger frame size. And it comes in a bunch of different options. It's not just click and buy and that's it. There's, there's a few ways you can order this thing. But um, we'll talk about that here in a minute. This one's called the Bike Tricks Joggernaut. As you can see right there on the uh, rear triangle. And the Juggernaut is a, a family of bikes that they make, and this one's called the Ultra FS Pro. They proudly have a Canadian flag right there, because they're from Canada. FS stands for full suspension, and Pro is the, is the model that you're getting, because it has a bunch of Pro-level spec uh, parts. So I say this in basically all of my e-bike reviews. An e-bike has a heart, and the heart of this bike is the motor and the battery. So the motor on this bike is the Bafang 1000 watt ultra motor, which is an evolution, uh, an evolution step up from their previous 1000 watt motor that's just a cadence sensor. This one has a torque sensor in it. And if you don't know what a torque sensor is, essentially what that is is it's a sensor in here that measures the force of you pushing down on the pedals so it'll gradually feed you more power the more that you step on the pedals which basically equates to a more refined experience um, a lot of times when you ride some of these cheaper bikes with the cadence sensor only when the uh, cadence sensor kicks in it'll just give you full power of whatever setting you had the motor to which works I mean it goes but it's kind of a a jolting unrefined um, experience and it can actually throw you around on the trail whereas this it's basically like having um, a, a bionic arm or a bionic leg um, helping you do what you want to do if I can explain it that way another amazing thing about the 1000 ultra motor from Bafang is that it, it, it has a lot of Newton meters of torque this thing is advertised to have a hundred and sixty Newton meters of torque that's crazy, especially when you factor in companies like Specialized and Trek and Giant with their uh, Bosch motors or Brozy motors or even the uh, Yamaha motor. They only advertise 70, 80, 90 Newton meters of torque. This thing's putting out 160 Newton meters of torque. So in some ways, you're getting more power for less money when you go with the Bike Tricks Juggernaut Ultra FS Pro. That's pretty awesome. That's like a huge selling point in my opinion. The downside to uh, the Ultra Motor is that with technology being that advanced, you're going to pay a, um, a price. So the, the price goes up. But you do get your money's worth, that's for sure. The other part of the heart is going to be the battery pack. Um, you can choose between different types of batteries. You can't choose the different uh, motors. Uh, this specific high-end model only comes with the Ultra Motor, as far as I know. But you can pick different batteries. So the battery is housed in this shell right here in the down tube of this aluminum frame. And you can choose between a 48 volt battery pack or a 52 volt battery pack. I opted for the 52 volt battery pack. And this one has the 17.5 um, amp hours uh, coming out of that battery pack. So essentially what that is, is, without getting too technical, the 52 volt battery packs is like having more horsepower. Um, it allows you to feed more electricity to the motor. Um, not necessarily more speed per se, uh, but you definitely get more power like when you're trying to climb. So like I said, the battery is a 17.5 uh, amp hour battery. And some people like to know the watt hours. Uh, they advertise a 910 watt hours uh, battery pack. And to keep that in perspective, the big boys like Trek and Specialized and Giant, a lot, a lot of their battery packs only have 500 watt hour capacities as their top end. And then 400 is their entry. So this one has a 910 watt hour battery pack. So again, you're getting more battery capacity for less money than the the big the big companies so that's pretty cool so when you choose the bigger battery pack with the 52 volt 17 amp hour battery pack they advertise that you can get 40 miles of range 
So, of course, that's, uh, that's all relative to how you ride it. So if you're a soft rider, a lightweight rider on flat ground in the best settings like Eco, and you're doing pedal assist only, no throttle, you could probably get 40 miles out of that. But if you start riding this thing hard with throttle, a lot of throttle, and you, you, you know, you're going up hills and, and having rough terrain, that range is going to decrease, of course. So it's all relative to how you ride it. Um, it does lock in here with a lock on the frame and then there's a key if you look on this side here There's a keyhole here, so you can't steal it for the most part You need a, a key to get it out. You don't need a key to ride the bike, but you do need a key to get the battery out And then of course there's a shield here. It's like a plastic shield. I already got it all dirty but uh, that kind of protects it too from uh, debris and minor strikes from rocks flying up and stuff like that so I wanted to show you guys the charger here is the charger pretty big brick it says right on the back uh, three amps right there three amp charger so that's pretty good I've seen smaller chargers I've seen bigger chargers um, this is right in the middle so it should have a pretty good charge time I don't know how long it takes to charge this from dead because I couldn't find any data on that I'll put it um, in the description below if I can find it but I would assume with a 3 amp charger, which is pretty damn good, um, I'm going to guess 5, 6, 7 hours in general. Just, just going to guess. That's pretty cool. It has the uh, Canadian maple leaf on here too. <laughs> nice touch. And to charge it, there's a little rubber flap here. Weatherproof rubber flap. You just pull it out right there. You can kind of see the interface. And you take the charge wire plug it in and you can charge the battery right on the bike now if you want to charge the battery inside the garage or in your house you can just unlock it take the battery out and charge it off the bike and something to note which is kind of nice I've seen on other bikes where you need an adapter for your charge wire to charge the battery off the bike like giant I think giant does that and I think that's kind of ridiculous especially for the price you pay so with this one one wire charge on the frame or charged on the battery itself inside the house one wire so that's nice bike tricks is also famous for other bikes that they make and one of the bikes they make allows you to run an integrated battery with a piggyback battery and then you basically double your power and your range um, this doesn't do that unfortunately this is an advanced um, newer model that they had to do certain th make certain changes with the ultra motor so they just couldn't fit the uh the battery pack in here so you can't piggyback it if you're wondering if you can the answer is no you cannot piggyback a battery on here it does have the brazons for a, a bottle though you can put a bottle here for a water bottle that's cool so the frame is made out of aircraft grade aluminum and this is the raw frame meaning that uh, they didn't do anything to it other than just brush it with a some type of brush it's a brushed aluminum setup and then they just clear coated it they put the stickers on and clear coated it and just left it basically raw aluminum which i think looks beautiful i love that it's like an industrial kind of look it just looks really unique and it just looks beautiful especially in the sun it kind of picks up the little brush marks from the uh, electric brush that they used it looks nice you can get it in different colors though i believe it comes in uh red and blue and black i believe you can look on the website and see all the colors it's, it comes in. Here's the uh, mounting point for a bottle. A lot of times these e-bikes don't have enough room to put a bottle, but this one does, which is nice. If you look at the motor too, one of the things I noticed right away was the motor is well protected. It's pretty high off the ground, good ground clearance, and there's no wires coming down below the motor. So here's a good example of why e-bikes, and any bike really, should not have wires and hydraulic brake lines and any lines see how these wires come down they go inside the frame there should be no wires right here they come under the motor because if i would have hit these rocks and hit the bottom of my bike there if there was a brake line or any kind of cables at all they would get chewed up on the rocks I know there's a couple of designs out there that have 
wires that go into there. So when you're shopping around for bikes, make sure there's no wires going underneath the motor. So pretty awesome motor. Again, riding with a 1000 watt motor is pretty amazing. Again, if you don't know, mid drives have a series of of gears and planetary gears and cogs and all that stuff in here to basically give you an amazing gear ratio and torque on this crank here and this crank turns and then of course whatever you choose to use back there gets multiplied into force to the ground so it's like a combination of gear ratios here and gear ratios here all working together that's why these things climb so well when you have a hub drive bike it's whatever the gear ratio is inside the planetary gears in the hub that's all you get and then whatever um, power that motor has that's all you have with this you have insane power combined with um, the multiplication of the gear sets in the back so pretty nuts I mean this thing climbs really well like if you can hold on to the bike it'll go up the hill as long as there's traction this thing will go up the hill it's all connected to this SRAM NX11 group set in the back so you have um, 11 speed gear set back here so if you don't know um, SRAM makes really good stuff you got an awesome gear ratio up here and if you look closely right there you probably can't see it on camera but it says roller bearing clutch so there's actually a clutch set up in here to help reduce um, chain bounce and the chain coming off the uh, front chain ring as well as this chain guide here too to keep the chain on the chain ring when you're getting really aggressive off-road but yeah really nice group set love it the other amazing part about this bike is the suspension so up front right away you can see that this one has rock shocks recon air shocks and these are pretty nice these are uh, a step up from the oil spring shocks that a lot of these um, e-bikes come with uh, this one is stepping up into the the more high performance world right of course there's different levels of high performance but um this is essentially um i'd say just above entry level when it comes to air shocks because you can get cheaper air shocks that's for sure um you have compression adjustments here different levels of compression and then you have uh, lockout as well you can lock this and make it a, a stiff fork with no suspension at all if you want to put it on a bike rack or maybe climbing up a hill and then you have rebound adjustments down in the bottom here there's actually a lever down there where you can adjust how fast it rebounds and then of course on this side that's the cap that covers the Schrader valve where you put air into the uh, fork when you go with higher end suspension forks you're going to get more travel at the end of the day that's really what you're getting because you can get cheaper air shocks or air forks but they're not going to travel as much so with the rock shocks recon um, it even says right here 150 millimeters of travel so that's kind of nice and it's even um it's even set up so you can run 29 so if you want to run a mullet setup and do a 29 up front and a 27 and a half in the back you can do that with these shocks it, it says right here 29 inch so that's a nice option to go with this setup and if you look at the geometry it's slacked out meaning the forks kind of stick out more so than they do inside and uh, that has its own pros and cons the pros to that is obviously this is going to be good for going downhill and with the weight of this bike I think it weighs like 70 pounds or something like that the heavier the bike the, the more it'll stick to the to the surface that you're riding on so a lot of people say a heavier bike going downhill with the slack head angle actually works out really good coming down, coming down picking up speed Woo. yeah <laughs> Woo. some big rocks right there you can pop a tire on those rocks you really got to keep your arms loose here Oh man, this is beating up the suspension and tires so bad. Good, really good test. This is a really good test of the suspension on the rocks. Oh my God. 
I'm not a pro or any, by any means, but for my novice riding, it does really perform well going downhill. That's for sure. Now, like I said, with this uh, company, they allow you to choose different things. It's not just click and buy. So I opted for the uh, 27 and a half inch wheel set because they do have a four inch fat tire set up as well, but I didn't want that. If you go with the four inch fat tire wheel set, which is a 26 by four inches, um, it'll come with a different fork. Um, it's gonna be a wider fork, obviously, because it's a four inch fat tire. And I believe that fork is a RST guide. But um, when you go with the 27 and a half inch setup, you get better shocks because rock shocks is actually better than the rst guide um, i opted for the boost axles so if you don't know um, the four inch wide tires will come with a different type of axle which, which is basically wider boost axles are going to be a little smaller and they have these through axles these beefier bigger axles that go through and screw into the other side, kind of like a motorcycle, which is pretty nice. Very strong, very durable, very safe. If you've never seen one of these boost axles before, way bigger than your regular traditional quick release. Tougher, stronger, beefier. And uh, yeah, a lot of guys like having through axles for sure versus quick release skewers like the nine millimeter quick release skewers those are those are nice to get the job done but this is way more beefier again like a motorcycle and for those wondering these are maxis high roller twos with the uh exo protection basically sidewall protection oh yeah these are tubeless ready it says right there so uh there you go guys if you're wondering it is tubeless ready and if you don't know what tubeless is that's where you take the tube out and then you put a sealant inside here with the tape over the spokes and then if you get a thorn or something in here you could literally pull it out and then the gel or the sealant will instantly seal up that hole so that's kind of a nice setup another option you can do though is go with like tannis um, tire armor which I, I really like because uh, it's basically like a foam that sits inside your tire and then if you you get a thorn or a nail or something in there you pull it out yeah your tire um, might get a flat, but if it goes flat, um, that foam in there acts as like a run flat. So you can actually ride your bike with the tire flat. It's not going to be the best ride, but you'll be able to get home without destroying your rim because it has a run flat kind of insert in there. So I actually like the Tannis a lot. Free plug for Tannis, by the way. Look at that. And then it's also, um, there's also other stuff too. I think Tuffy Liners is another one where you can just kind of wrap, wrap the, uh, the inside of your uh, tire with this rubber liner that goes in between the tube and the tire. There's a bunch of different options, but but yeah, that's kind of nice that you get nice high quality tires with this bike. These are three inch plus tires. So they're 27 and a half by three inch. And as you can see, they are fat. I mean, uh, they're not as fat as the four inch obviously, but the reason why I wanted this is because this is kind of like the middle ground between your traditional um, 2.5 mountain bike tire that's fairly skinny and it's in the middle between that and a four inch which is way fatter like humongously fatter i have a fat tire e-bike and those are great for sand and snow and gravel but not very nimble they're big they're heavy and they they're hard to throw around on the trail so this is way more nimble way more responsive kind of like a traditional mountain bike but you can use that volume. It has a nice big volume of air inside here where you can air it down and then use that as like a micro suspension, as I've heard others say. And the tires themselves absorb quite a bit of uh, travel when you hit rocks and ruts. So when you combine the micro suspension of the air volume in the tires with the Rock Shocks Air Shock suspension front and rear, this thing is amazing over rough terrain you go over rocks ruts oh, so and tree beautiful. stumps and everything out that's out there that's going to bang into this thing it just floats over it because of that tire and suspension combination i love it pretty cool Absolutely i like this it, setup man. this is so nice and here's a look at the back tire 
So the only real downside to this is if you do choose to go with the boost axles and the three inch tires, the 27 and a half inch tires, um, you really can't go up. Once you go with the, uh, the boost axles and the three inch tires, you have to stick with this. You can't switch over to bigger four inch tires because obviously everything is sized down to fit the three inch. Uh, I have heard though, if you go with the four inch setup, um, there are companies out there that will sell you aftermarket um, adapters to run these these wheels and wheels and tires on the four inch wide setup. So uh, I don't think Bike Tricks offers that, but I know there's aftermarket companies that do stuff like that. On the back, they've stuck with Rock Shocks. Obviously, it's kind of nice that you have a Rock Shocks fork. In the back, you have a Rock Shocks Monarch, and this too is very adjustable. If you don't know about these. Um, here's the Schrader valve where you pump it up with a special pump and you can pump this up all the way up to 275 PSI and there's also a rebound adjustment the red one there if you can see that red knob that's your rebound adjustment for fast or slow um, rebound when you're bouncing through certain terrain and of course a lockout the blue one and that's nice for climbing hills or putting it on a bike rack so here's a look at the pivot arm. Really nice engineering on this pivot arm. A lot of times you'll see on these cheaper e-bikes, it just looks like two pieces of metal that were stamped out of um, some pot metal or something. But this, this is a nice, nice engineered piece of aluminum there. And of course you have your bushings and your pivot points with the uh, Newton meters for torque stamped or um, laser etched into the bolts which is a nice sign of quality there. Another big selling point to this bike is the braking system. So this one has Tektro Dorado four piston hydraulic disc brakes. A lot of times you'll see on e-bikes, they'll uh, have hydraulic brakes, but it'll only be a two piston, meaning there's a piston on this side and a piston on this side. It's just two pistons squeezing on the disc rotor here. Well, they stepped it up on this one four piston pretty nice right of course that costs more money but again when you're flying down the trails on a you know 70 pound e-bike you want stopping power that's for sure and with four pistons versus two pistons um, that allows you to do one finger braking so say you're going down the trail and you need to brake real quick you can literally just keep the majority of your hand on the uh, handlebars for safety and control and then release one finger pull this lever and guess what you're going to lock up that back tire if you want to you have the power to lock up the wheels if you need to oh, don't go off the ledge there that would have been ugly Or give it modulated braking as you need it's pretty nice and while we're up here you can kind of see the uh, levers again these are Tektro Dorados they use mineral oil in here it's a hydraulic system really nice and then up in the front this is a quick look at what they look like love it now that I uh, I've ridden this bike a lot in the last 30 days. I kind of don't want anything else other than four piston disc brakes. <laughs> I'm spoiled now. So if you look at the uh, disc rotor themselves, they are 203 millimeters. And that's kind of like the gold standard size for all high-end bikes now. A lot of the lower-end spec bikes will have much smaller discs. So usually 180s, even down to 160s. But these ones are 203s. And they're actually 203s, I believe, front and rear, yep. 203 in the rear as well. A lot of times you'll see e-bikes with a certain size in the front and then a smaller one in the back. They kept life simple and made them both 203s. That's nice to see. If you're wondering what this welded piece right here is with this piece of electronics, that's another sensor. This is your speed sensor. And it's fixed to your uh, rear triangle. 
And what that does is that measures the speed at which your wheel is spinning by tracking this magnet that's bolted onto one of your spokes. So that's how the uh, speedometer knows how fast you're going. If you look up here at the frame, you'll see that it has a tapered headset or head tube or steer tube, whatever you want to call it. Uh, if you don't know what that means, basically it's wider down here and narrower up here. Um, for whatever reason, I'm not an engineer, but apparently that's a more uh, advanced design for mountain bikes and bikes in general. But what that tells me is, is if you want to swap these forks out for an even better fork than this, um, you have access to all the modern tapered forks that are out there on the market. So the handlebars are pretty wide. I'm not sure the exact measurements, but I'd guess they're like 700 millimeter wide. Uh, and you need a wide handlebar for a big, heavier bike like this. It gives you more stability and control throwing this bike around on the trails, nice and wide. They're kind of a straight handlebar. There's no riser to them. They're mounted on a Promax, uh, Promax stem with four spacers. It's a threadless setup if you don't know. It's nice. You can swap those out pretty easy if you want something else. The grips, pretty standard grips, nice and grippy. They are lock-on, so you see a bolt right there and a bolt right here. So meaning that these two metal rings actually lock onto the handlebars so they don't slip at all. A lot of times you'll see on, again, on cheaper e-bikes, they'll just have friction fit uh, grips that work fine for the neighborhood. But once you go off road and start throwing the bike around, they start to slip off the handlebars. These will not do that. Here's your throttle. So at any moment, if you want to override the pedal assist, you can just hit the throttle and zoom up a hill or over an obstacle without worrying about your crank position. Because a lot of times when you're pedaling this thing, you get to a boulder um, and you want to power over a boulder or over a log, your crank will strike that boulder. Well, with the throttle, you can just ride over it like a dirt bike. Yeah, it's a little technical here. <laughs> So it's kind of nice to have the throttle when you don't want to uh, pedal and hit your cranks on a rock. It actually comes in handy. Some places don't allow you to have throttles, so just be aware. If you live in a place where they don't allow throttles, you, you can disconnect this and just use it as a pedal assist only type setup. Here's your SRAM NX trigger shifter. Really nice. The longer one is for shifting down into um, a low gear for climbing. And then the bottom one there is to go into a high gear for flats, for going high speed on flat surfaces. And it shifts beautifully. I had no issues with the uh, shifter at all. All right, let's talk about the uh, controller. It's mounted nicely right over the stem. Pretty nice to turn it on. You have a control button over here to the left. Just hit the power button for a few seconds. And then boom, screen comes on. It's a, this is their newest LCD screen with backlight. There's your time. There's your percentage in percentage numbers. Your battery percentage, I like that. Instead of just bars, I like having percentage numbers. In the middle is your miles per hour. You can change that to kilometers depending on where you live. Here is also your miles per hour gauge. It tells you how, how fast you're going here. But what's cool about it is on this side, there's also a gauge. This is your watts, how many watts are being used. And um, you can actually, it's actually set for eco when you first turn it on, which is the green, the green uh, numbers and letters. But if you hold the plus button just for a few seconds, it'll turn it into sport mode. It even says sport right there in red. So now when you hit the throttle or hit your uh, cranks, it'll give you the full 1500 watt max right out the gate so that's pretty nice i think with the uh with the uh eco mode it doesn't give you the full 1500 basically to save your battery and i've been riding on eco right now down here is your different modes so let's go ahead and hit the i button right here and that'll change them through odometer max average range calories time trip 
So pretty cool, right? And to turn it off, you just hit it like that and hold it. It'll turn off. Just turn it back on because we're going to take off here in a minute. Another thing you'll notice is uh, it has an I button. That's basically your enter button. So if you hold the plus and minus down for a few seconds, it'll put you into the settings mode and then you can go up or down on the menu and then I is your enter button. So you can unlock it if you want to go like 32, 33 miles per hour. But it comes to you at 20 miles per hour. And it also has a headlight. So if you get caught riding after dark, uh, turn on the headlight. You just hit that button right there. Just hold it for a few seconds and you'll see a headlight icon right there and your headlights will turn on. There's no brake light, just a headlight just to get you home safely. And then to turn it off, you just hold it. They do provide a rear flashing red light. So it's not a brake light, but it's a little clamp on red light in the back for safety. If you're going to use this uh, in the city for whatever reason. Let's go ahead and put it on flashing mode. So this is definitely not a commuter bike. This is a hardcore mountain bike. Dare I say uh, an electronic downhill bike, not a commuter bike. You could use it for a commuter bike though. I mean, I don't see why not. But uh, there is no, no brake lights, no turn signals, no baskets, no panniers, no racks. There's not even any uh, brazons for a rack, so not really set up for that. This is hardcore trail riding, mountain bike riding. And the pedals are well go, pretty standard for uh, the industry in general. Um, nothing to write home about. They get the job done. They're platform pedals with uh, metal spikes. They do the job, but I would like better pedals if I uh, were to swap anything out. I would put better pedals with taller, uh, removable, changeable spikes because um, I always ride with these uh, Solomon shoes and for whatever reason my shoes just don't match up well with these spikes like maybe they're not tall enough or something but I always felt like um, I wasn't a hundred percent locked into these pedals again they do just fine but um, that's just a personal peeve I'd rather have better pedals from the factory this does not come with a dropper post it has a quick release for your post here a Pro Max seat post and then adjustable front and rear and tilting seat this seat is branded cell royale and uh, it's actually a really comfortable seat as you can see i'm squeezing it here it's a pretty comfortable seat a lot of times guys will ask me um, because it's an electric bike does it have uh, regen braking or regenerative uh, features at all uh, so the answer to this one is no it doesn't have regen braking because there's no motor in the hubs to do that. You'd have to have a motor in the hub to do that. And two, uh, the mid-drive doesn't have regen here either at all. So it's just not something that you see on mid-drives as far as I know. I'm no expert, but as far as I know, mid-drives don't even have mid, uh, regen braking. Uh, to be quite honest, from what I've seen, regen is really only uh, effective on bigger vehicles like motorcycles and uh, cars because they have a lot of mass and bigger hills to go downhill and bigger braking systems to uh, to capture that energy. Whereas bikes, they're just so small and light and the, the downhills aren't usually enough to, to really do anything. Uh, I've seen scooters with regen braking and it didn't really give it more than one or 2% more power back to the battery. So I wouldn't get too hung up on not having regen um, features on an e-bike. At least not in today's world. So another thing I notice about this bike, and it's probably all mid drives, I would assume, because there's no big motor in the hub. Sometimes these bikes have a motor in the hub or, or both hubs for that matter. Um, it just seems like this bike is easy to pedal even when the motor is off. Like if you just hit the power button, turn everything off or the battery dies completely, um, you could just pedal this thing like a regular bike because you still have all the mechanical advantage of your gears back here. So you have access to all those gears. And because the uh, motor sits extremely low in the frame, your center of gravity is nice and low. This thing actually rides really well without any power at all. So that's another thing to, uh, to consider when you're buying uh, e-bikes. All right. And lastly, let's talk about the 
kickstand. <laughs> that doesn't have a kickstand. They don't make it with a kickstand built into the bike and there's not even um, a welded part here where you can add or bolt on a kickstand to this actual frame. And uh, I get it. This is a hardcore mountain bike and most hardcore mountain bikers don't ride around the mountains with a kickstand flopping around on their bike, also adding weight to the bike. Um, they do ship it with a bolt-on kickstand. It's, it's like a clamp that goes on this side and then another clamp that goes on the other side and it just clamps onto this rear triangle here. And it worked fine for a couple days, but I was out here beating the crap out of this bike, testing it hard. I really wanted to get a good feel for this bike. They told me to. They said, hey, yeah, test it, ride it, ride it hard and give us feedback. Downhill. Don't make any mistakes here. If you crash here, it's gonna hurt. I don't have a full face helmet. Two fingers on the brakes, oh. Coming down. Woo. Well, here's some feedback. I broke the uh, kickstand. Well, I didn't break it, the bike vibrated it right off <laughs> so i don't know what happened it, it it shaked off some parts some screws and one of the little clamps came off i still have the kickstand it's just missing some clamps so i can't use it so keep that in mind it does not have a good kickstand so here's something really cool um, the e-bike world in general even regular bikes for that matter are getting more and more expensive plus the demand is through the roof so a lot of people are like, you know what, I can't afford $4,000. Um, the cool thing is, is they work with a company called Klarna, and uh, basically you can finance this bike. So if you have good credit and you're okay with financing um, a bike like this, uh, you can sign up. Go, go on the website and look at all the details, but well, sign up with Klarna, and you'll be able to roughly get this thing for about 150 bucks a month, which is pretty awesome. Something to note, um, they do have a return policy, so 14 day return policy, but there is a fee and you gotta go to the website and read all the details and uh, the fees are, are um, they're not cheap because shipping alone is probably gonna be a couple hundred bucks, probably like 500 bucks or something. But yeah, go to the website, look at all the details. You can return it if you're not happy. So that is a nice selling point too, that they, they wanna make sure you're happy with your purchase. All right, guys, there you have it. That is my review of the Bike Tricks Juggernaut Ultra FS Pro. I think this bike is absolutely amazing. The performance that this bike has is worth the $4,399, in my opinion, if you're one of those types of guys that are in the market for a bike like this. So let's talk about that. Who's going to be in the market for something like this? I think a couple people, right? So this is not for everybody. Obviously, 4000 is a lot of money. Um, this is for the guy that has some experience riding, right? He's been riding regular mountain bikes for a while and wants to step up into the e-bike game, but he already knows he doesn't want a cheap a cheap e-bike. He wants something that's that has a lot of performance because that guy rides up in the mountains on the trails, and he knows that his, his uh, skill level is going to adapt real quick to a bike like this. So that would be worth every penny to a real mountain biker who wants to get into a mid-drive high-end bike. Um, also too, guys like me who are older, uh, a little bit older, I'm middle-aged, <laughs> and uh, I'm not as you know youthful as I used to be, but I still wanna go outside and play. And I'm in a place in my life where I have a little bit of extra play money, and I'm okay with buying a, a higher-end bike. Right? I also think this is a, an outstanding um, overland bike slash campsite bike. What I mean by that is a lot of guys who go out into the country and go camping out into the mountains or whatever, uh, once they set up camp and they, they park their truck, their camper, whatever, their trailer, they want to extend their adventure by exploring the area that they, they're camping at. Like this place, for example. You know, I'm out here uh, out in BLM land. If I went up into the hills and parked my truck and I can't go any further because the roads are just single tracks from that point on you can unhook your badass 1000 watt full suspension mountain bike and extend your ex exploration on a bike like this it's pretty awesome uh, 
So yeah, this absolutely is good for overlanders and campers in general. Uh, also to just campers, uh, pe people who don't want to bring an extra vehicle, they can bring a good e-bike uh, on the back of their RV, get to the campsite, hook everything up, undo the bikes, go explore around town, and go play off in the dirt as well, right? So very good bike for that as well, in my opinion. And then lastly, what about the guys who want a pretty badass bug out bike? And if you don't know what that is or what bugging out is, Google it. But um, for the guys that want a bug out vehicle for their bug out vehicle, say you have some type of very capable 4x4 vehicle that can go really far, but something happens, the vehicle gets disabled, but you want to continue getting away from whatever issues are going on in the city, this becomes your bug out vehicle. You unhook this thing, put on a backpack, uh, you could, like I said, put some racks on here that clamp on to the bike. It's not made for that, but you can clamp some some to it. Or even a trailer, a small trailer, like a game trailer for hunting deer. Put one of those on here and you can go even further away from whatever it is you're bugging out from. Very capable, off-road, very powerful, pretty cool bug out vehicle, if you ask me. There you go, guys. That is it. That is my review of the Bike Tricks Juggernaut Ultra FS Pro. If you want to buy one of these, I'll put a link below this video to where you can uh, go directly to the uh, website to buy one of these, the uh, Bike Tricks website. And uh, again, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully, you had some fun watching it. It was entertaining or it was educational at least. And if you did um, get something out of this video, please hit that like button to support my channel. I appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. Ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos because you never know when I'm going to upload a new video. And lastly, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the Bike Tricks Juggernaut Ultra FS Pro. Is this a bike you'd buy? Do you think it's worth $4,399? And if you did buy it, what would you use it for? Where would you ride it? What trails do you recommend? All right, guys, take care.